what to expect on a Viking cruise is a focus of this video and I'll be taking you through general information about Viking, their fleet of ships. We'll then be looking at the particular ship which I travelled on recently to Norway and that's the Viking Mars and I'll take you deck by deck through what you can find on one of the Viking Ocean cruise ships. Now each ship is identical so there are at the moment nine in the fleet so it doesn't matter which ship you're going on when you go on an ocean cruise the format will be very very similar i'll then give you a tour around the cabin which i had and then finish off with lots more general information so sit tight and let's start off with learning all about Viking itself. Viking Ocean Cruises has won many, many awards and they are classed as small ships. They take around 930 passengers and over 400 staff. The ships are engineered in a size that allows direct access into most ports so guests can easily and efficiently embark and disembark, allowing for more time in the actual port itself. The ship I sailed on was Viking Mars and it was added to the fleet last year, 2022. And at the end of this video, I'll share with you the itinerary which I went on. Now, when it comes to the passengers, one thing about Viking is that passengers have to be 18 years old and older. So there were no children running around the decks and that made for a really chilled experience. New to me was the fact that on a cruise ship, the cabin is called a stateroom, similar to in a hotel, a, an actual room that you would book. And there are a variety of different types of stateroom. And what makes Viking special is that every single stateroom has a veranda or sort of balcony area. So everyone on the ship has a view of the sea from their veranda and for me that was really special every morning waking up and pulling back my curtain to open up the big french doors and see the sea was so special so yeah that really made a big difference to me i've sailed on ferries in the past when i used to work for Brittany ferries and had to stay in a cabin that doesn't have a sea view and there's such a difference it just gives a lot more spacious feel to your little personal space on board the ship viking the company was founded in norway and you can really see in the interiors the way that they've styled them, that there's very much a Scandinavian look and feel. The interiors are very stylish and very light and very sleek and very relaxing to spend time in. On Viking ships there are lots of different dining options and what's great is you don't have to pay extra to dine in a certain restaurant. What's also great about Viking is that included in the price of your cruise is free wine, beer and soft drinks at lunch and dinner time. Another thing to note about Viking is that there's no dress code, so no formal dining. So a sort of smart casual look is what I packed. On board the ship there are swimming pools. One is an infinity pool and that is open outside. There's also a Nordic inspired spa which is heavenly. I experienced two or three treatments there and there's also a fitness center with lots of equipment and weights and machines as well. What's also really handy on Viking cruises is that there are self-service laundrettes with washing machines and tumble dryers and that's completely free of charge. So now we'll look at the decks and there are nine decks and it took me a little while to get my head around whether deck nine was at the top or the bottom and then I realized that if I remembered that the higher the number, the higher the deck, um, then it all made sense. So deck nine is at the top and deck one is at the bottom. And one, two and seven are the decks with the main public areas like the restaurants and um, the spa and you'll see as I run through each of the decks for you now. So on deck one, there are several places where you can eat. There's the kitchen table, the chef's table, Manfredi's, which is an Italian restaurant. There's also the living room where they have a little sort of snack bar, which is great for if you want to grab a takeaway tea or coffee to take on shore. And there are also open sandwiches and cookies and muffins. So that's really handy on deck one. There's also where you'll find guest services. On deck one is the fitness center and also the Nordic spa. On the next deck up is the restaurant. 
and also the theatre and bar. There's also two cinemas and Trorshaven, which is like a little sort of cabaret nightclub-y area. There are shops, the beautiful atrium and also a panorama deck. On deck three, that's where the state rooms start and you'll see there's also a laundrette and there's the atrium, so the top level of the atrium. On decks four and five, you'll find state rooms and on each deck also a self-service laundrette. On deck six are also state rooms and a laundrette together with the bridge. On deck seven, these are some of my favorite areas. Firstly, the Explorer's Lounge is a great place to go in the evening to meet up with people, to have a drink at the bar, but also during the afternoon. I spent many a pleasant afternoon sat there on one of the comfy sofas and um, treating myself to cake from Mamson's, which is just around the corner. So that's a great place to relax and chill out. Also up on deck seven are the infinity pool and hot tub. And another lovely area is the Aquavit terrace where you can eat outside and that's just by the World Cafe. Towards the centre of deck seven is the Winter Garden and that's where you can have an afternoon tea in the afternoon and next to that is the main pool. On deck eight are more state rooms and the upper level of the Explorer's Lounge and at the front of deck nine are the outdoor gym and yoga area. So now onto the state rooms, so the cabins but they're called state rooms on cruise ships and there are six different types but what's great about all of them is that they have the veranda as I mentioned so they've got floor to ceiling French doors that you open and you can go out on your little balcony or veranda they call it and just sit there and watch the world go by. I stayed in a penthouse veranda stateroom and I'll give you a little look around now when I run through the kinds of facilities which are available in it and I'll also link below to the Viking website where you can find out about the other five different types of stateroom. So it's got a king size bed it's also got a television. It's got lots of plug points and also USB ports. It has a large bathroom with a shower, heated floor, anti-fog mirror and hairdryer. And there are also complimentary toiletries, plus robes and slippers. There was so much storage space available. So wardrobes and drawers, and in one of the wardrobes was a security safe. There was purified water available daily and also a mini bar with alcoholic drinks, soft drinks, water and snacks. In the room there was also binoculars which you could use on your veranda and there was a personal coffee machine with coffee and tea selections and if you wanted to you could request a kettle which of course I did. The room itself has a steward and there's twice daily housekeeping as well as 24 hour room service. I think the veranda was my favourite part of the stateroom and it was the place where I would have breakfast sometimes so I'd get room service. It was also lovely when we were coming into or out of a port watching as the, the ship manoeuvred and it was really magical coming in and out of the fjord at Garenga Ford. I really really enjoyed the aspect of the room also the bathroom was great, well actually everything was great in the room and the service was incredible. So the stewards who were there, there were two of them who swapped shifts, they were so friendly and so helpful so you really felt looked after. Now on to the itinerary. I was invited on a press trip which was sailing a section of what's called the Into the Midnight Sun itinerary and I actually sailed from Tromso to Bergen but I'll put a link to the whole um, itinerary itself below because it's a 15 day, 14 night excursion which either goes from London up to Bergen or the other way round and the next time it will be doing this is next May. So it's called Into the Midnight Sun because during the summer months when this particular trip runs you can see the midnight sun because the trip goes all the way up to above the Arctic Circle and I'll put some footage now so you can see what it looks like. It was absolutely stunning and yeah quite magical and surreal. So I'll show you now the itinerary for Into the Midnight Sun and all the different stops. Starting off with London and stopping at Greenwich, then on to Edinburgh, the Orkney Islands, Shetland Islands, Honigsberg, 
Tromso, the Lofoten Islands, Garanga Fjord, and Bergen. What's great about Viking Ocean itineraries is that they're designed to maximise the amount of time which guests have at their destination so they can spend as much time as possible on shore. And included in the price of the cruise is an excursion every single time the, um, the ship is in a port. So yeah, I experienced quite a few of those and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed them. And I've actually got a video which I created couple of days ago all about the Lofoten Islands and I'll put a link to that below as well. What I will also do is put a link below to more details about Into the Midnight Sun, the itinerary, and also details of Viking Mars and a 360 degree tour which you can do, which is very clever. You can just move your mouse around and move around each deck and, and the rooms. So yeah, you'll be able to see exactly what it looks like on board. So it was my very first time cruising the cruise to Norway with Viking and I think I was incredibly fortunate to be asked to go on this press trip as the cruise completely surpassed my expectations and I'm not surprised at all that Viking have won so many awards including Condé Nast Traveller Awards for many years for their ships and the itineraries that they have. I highly recommend the company and I can't wait to go on another cruise with them hopefully in the not too distant future. So on the screen now you'll see a link to my video all about the Lofoten Islands and the excursions which I did there and I hope you enjoy watching that too.